Hi, I'm Brian Clark. I'm a guitarist and producer based here in Nashville, Tennessee. And today I'm coming to you from Rainfeather Studios. We're going to give you a handful of proven mic techniques to help you record better electric guitar. So the first thing we want to ask is, what is great guitar tone? And the answer is, it's completely subjective. So some people like Ry Cooter more than Sonny Landreth, some people like Eddie Van Halen more than Steve Vai, and so on and so forth. What we're trying to get into today is techniques to help you capture the sound that you want to hear when you're recording. Another thing to think about is acoustics itself. The human ear basically hears from 20 hertz to 22 kilohertz. And what happens in that space between low frequencies and high frequencies is that the sound goes from omnidirectional to very directional. In fact, the top end almost like a laser beam. Keep this in mind when we get into ambient miking techniques a little later on in the video. And lastly, this is not a conclusive list by any stretch. In fact, miking guitar amps is virtually limitless. The only thing that it's bounded by is your creativity and imagination. But the techniques that we're going to talk about today have been used by many, many platinum selling artists, record producers, and engineers over the last 50 years. The first example we're going to talk about is what I call close proximity miking. And as you can see, we have a Marshall 410 cab, and I've got an SM57 on axis directly in the center of the cone of the speaker. That's where we're going to start. Here's what you can kind of expect from this particular mic setup. You're going to hear a lot of the upper transient noises. The pick attack is going to be very, very clear. You're also going to hear almost a sort of a, a papery type of sound. It's going to have a lot of flutter on the top end. And if that's the sound you're looking for, this is the best way to achieve that tone. So now we're going to move the microphone off axis, and the way that I'm going to be able to achieve this, since the speakers aren't really apparent to us, is a handy flashlight. So by putting it on, I can shine it inside this cabinet and see the cone and then move it. So right now, I'm about an inch and a half off axis. What we can expect from this type of configuration is a much warmer sound and that fluttery top end is going to be attenuated so it's going to sound much more silky up there. So let's listen. Now we could keep going with an SM57 all day long for all of these examples, but just to be diverse, we're going to talk about another type of mic. It's important for you to keep in mind that there are three main microphone types, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon. An SM57 is a dynamic mic, along with an RE20 and a Sennheiser 421. Those are the three most common dynamic mics that you'll see miking guitar cabinets. The second category of mic is a large diaphragm condenser mic. Most notably would be Neumann models, like a U67 or a U47. You can also have uh, an AKG 414. These types of mics are good because they're noted for a silky top end and a little bit more of a bass presence, so you get a lot more of a fuller spectrum. And that's what we're going to use in this next example. For this example, we've got a U47 type microphone on axis to the cone of the speaker in front of an AC15, which is a 112. And for this example, we're going to switch and use a Telecaster. The next example, we just moved the mic an inch and a half off axis from the cone of the speaker.
The last category of mics are ribbon mics. Ribbon mics are known for their overall warmth and smoothness all across the frequency spectrum. Um, classic mics of this would be a Coles 4038, uh, the Bayer M160, um, Royer 121, and uh, these microphones are generally expensive. They don't like phantom power, so you have to be careful when you're using a ribbon mic, but they can take very high decibel levels, so don't be afraid to use them around a loud amp. In this example, we're going to be using a ribbon mic about two and a half feet away from a silver-faced Vibrolux Reverb that features two 10-inch speakers, and we're going to be using a Strat on this example. One thing to keep in mind when using ribbon mics is that they're usually a fixed figure eight pattern, which means that they pick up equally in front and in the back. So we're going to get much more of a roomy sound, and this is important for you to keep in mind if you want to have a larger space and not feel like you're right up next to the speaker. Now I'm going to play the same thing, but this time I moved the mic back even further. So now we're a good three and a half feet away from the amp, and it's going to give us much more of a room sound. Now we can talk about multiple mic setups. This is really good if you want a lot of variety in your guitar track. And in this case, what I've set up is something that's quite common, which is putting one mic in the front and one mic in the back, especially if it's a combo amp that has an open back. Another thing you could do is if you had a 4x12 cabinet, you could mic one speaker in the cabinet and mic another speaker in the cabinet and blend the two, because no two speakers sound the same. So these are just different techniques. What you're hearing in this example is going to be an old Ampeg Jet J12, which has a 112 in it. It's from 1964. A ribbon mic in the back and an SM57 slightly off axis about four and a half inches away from the grill cloth. What we'll do is solo each mic and then let you hear them together. One thing to keep in mind when doing this type of approach, one of the two microphones needs to be out of phase with the other microphone. You can use your phase switch either on the mic itself if it has it, or on the mic pre that you're using, or you can even do it inside your computer, inside the DAW that you're using. So keep that in mind because otherwise the guitar is going to sound very thin and not have a lot of mid-range, and that's a sure sign that something's out of phase. So we've done three different types of mics today and four different types of setups and possibilities. So just to recap, dynamic mic, the Shure SM57, large diaphragm condenser mic, which is a Peluso U47, and the ribbon mic, which is made by Roger Cloud, it's the JRS34. Lots of variants, lots of options. There are very expensive models and there are very cheap models. So feel free with whatever mics you have to experiment and try to find the best sound that you can find using the gear that you have. For Premier Guitar, I'm Brian Clark. See you next time.